Hi, this is Tala and I'm here to talk to you about hydroelectric power plants. Worldwide, hydroelectric power plants produce about 24% of the world's electricity and supply more than 1 billion people with power. There are more than 2,000 hydroelectric plants operating in the United States making, hydro making hydropower the country's largest renewable energy source. Hydropower plants harness water's energy and use simple mechanics to convert that energy into electricity. Now, we're going to show you how it works and what exactly about the water flowing through the dam makes electricity. Hydropower plants are actually based on a rather simple concept. Water flowing through a dam turns a turbine, which turns a generator. Most hydropower plants rely on a dam that holds back water, creating a large reservoir. Gates on the dam open and gravity pulls water through the penstock, which is a pipeline that leads to the turbine. Water builds up pressure as it flows through this pipe. The water strikes and turns the large blades of a turbine, which is attached to a generator above it by way of a shaft. The most common type of turbine for hydropower plants is the Francis turbine, which looks like a big disc with curved blades. A turbine can weigh as much as 172 tons and turn at a rate of 90 revolutions per minute. As the turbine blades turn, so do a series of magnets inside the generator. Giant magnets rotate past copper coils producing alternating currents, called an AC, by moving electrons. The transformer inside the powerhouse takes the AC and converts it to a higher voltage current. Out of every power plant comes four wires, the three phases of power being produced simultaneously, plus a neutral or ground common to all three. Used water is carried through pipelines called tail races and re-enters the river downstream. The water in the reservoir is considered stored energy. When the gates open, the water flowing through the penstock becomes kinetic energy because it's in motion. The amount of electricity that is generated is determined by several factors. Two of those factors are the volume of the water flow and the amount of hydraulic head. The head refers to the distant distance between the water surface and the turbines. As the head and the flow increase, so does the electricity generated. The head is usually dependent upon the amount of water in the reservoir. There's another type of hydropower plant called the pump storage plant. In a conventional hydropower plant, the water from the reservoir flows through the plant, exits, and is carried downstream. A pump storage plant has two reservoirs. The upper reservoir, which is like a conventional hydropower plant, where a dam creates the old reservoir. The water in this reservoir flows through the hydropower plant to create electricity. And then the lower reservoir, which is, a, which is water exiting the hydropower plant, flows into a lower reservoir rather than re-entering the river and flowing downstream. Using a reversible turbine, the plant can pump water back to the upper reservoir. This is done in off-peak hours. Essentially, the second reservoir refills the upper reservoir. By pumping water back to the upper reservoir, the plant has more water to generate electricity during periods of peak consumption. The heart of the hydroelectric power plant is the generator. Most power plants have several of these generators. The generator, as you might have guessed, generates the electricity. The basic process of generating electricity is this, in this manner is to rotate a series of magnets inside coils of wire. This process moves electrons, which produces electrical current. As the turbine turns, the exitor sends an electrical current to the rotor. The rotor is a series of large electromagnets that spin inside a tightly wound coil of copper wire called the stator. The magnetic field between the coil and the magnets creates an electric current. When considering whether to build a hydroelectric power plant, you need to take into account a few certain things. First off, is there water? You can't have a hydroelectric power plant without water. So you need to make sure that there is a place where water can easily be obtained. Um, places where there is often drought would probably not be a good idea. So places where there are year-round streams or lakes, lakes or rivers, would be the best place. You also want to take into account how low the water level is. You don't want to end up completely flooding the reservoir part of the dam that would end up with some very unhappy wildlife and possibly homeowner, homeowners. When building a power plant, there's a couple things that come up after it is constructed. Um, dams are extremely costly to, per, to construct, and so over time it would take much longer to pay back 
the costs. Natural environments are another huge thing that can come up. And building huge dams can cause significant damage to geological systems. For instance, the construction of the Hoover Dam has actually led to numerous earthquakes. Um, dams that are poorly constructed will end up falling apart, leading to death and flooding. And it can block progress of a river, which could lead to crop failures downstream. In our community, I really don't think a hydroelectric dam or power plant would be a good idea, mostly because Texas often will go through droughts, especially during the summer. So during summer months where we don't have active lakes and rivers, we won't be able to use the hydroelectric power plants. Also, um, we would benefit more from solar and wind energy, mostly because we are a very flat land surface, so it is easier for, it to collect, for us to collect the solar and wind energy rather than hydroelectric. The hydroelectric power plant is probably more suited for the northern parts of the country, Hi, this is Maggie. This is Tom. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even do the bloopers right. Okay. This is the example of why we can't do, do the bloopers. bloopers. <laughs> we can't even do the <laughs> Well, um, this is the bloopers from the production of this. As you can see, we had many of them. So we put these in here for your enjoyment. Um, hope you enjoy. Out of every flower... <laughs> I can't say words. <laughs> <laughs> Most hydroelectric power how the Javada hydroelectric power plants. I can speak words. <laughs> power plant comes for that's not there's not even an S there. And I keep on saying an S. The magnetic field between the coil and the magnets create <laughs> in a conventional hydro plant that those are big words. Why do you give me big words? <laughs> Them. <laughs> you think I can handle them. The heart of the elect <laughs> I already messed up and I've just started talking. Wow. The ele magnetic field between the coil and the magnets magnet 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 mix <laughs> You I'm trying to record something. <laughs> There's another type of hydropower plant called the pump storage plant. In a conventional hydropower plant, the water from the reservoir flows through the plant, exits, and is carried this... Th I should read through these before I start recording, shouldn't I? So apparently I can't say magnet. Magnets. See, I'm even having problems now. Magnets. Magnets. Okay, magnets. Magnet. Magnetically. Magnet. Magnet. Magnetically important magnets.